Hello, guys and gals. Welcome back. I hope you've been practicing those house riffs because today we're going to look into the sound. I'm going to show you how I would process them, and with a few free samples and plugins, we're going to get you release ready. Let's go. So, classic piano house sound. Where does it come from? Well, the likes of MK know, because they've been around for a while. And depending on how long you've been around, you'll either be surprised or not surprised to find out it's our old friend, the Core Game 1. Yep. Not only is it famous for the organ sound, but Patch 01, called Piano 16, was so impactful it became the sound of 90s Piano House, and we still use it today. Now, if there's one engineering tip I'm going to give on this channel, it's this. The source sound is key. Get that bit right and you won't even have to do any engineering. So what's so special about this piano sound from a keyboard that's over 30 years old? Surely there are much better pianos today, right? Well, better in terms of more realistic, yes. But better is a subjective term and it's also contextual. It turns out for making good dance music, the rather unrealistic brightness, attack and transience of the M1 piano are perfect for making groovy dance hooks. So fast forward to today, how do we get our hands on the coveted M1 piano? As usual, there are two ways, the paid way and the free way. The paid way is easiest, you just go to Korg's website, they make a virtual instrument of it now. Obviously you get all the other sounds as well, but load patch 01, piano 16 and you're ready to go. But if you've got empty pockets right now, don't worry, I've got you covered. Over on the website Failed Musos, link in the description, the producer Criminal has been busy sampling an M1, and it's been converted into various formats for your convenience. There's Akai format if you've got an Akai sampler. If you're a Logic user, there's EXS format. And for the rest of us, there's the Sound Font format. If you don't know, Sound Font is an open source sample format. So it's not tied to any particular manufacturer, which is great for us. If you are a FL Studio user, you have a sound font player built in. If you're an Ableton 10 or before user, you can drag sound font samples into its built-in sampler as well. However, if you're like me and you upgraded to Ableton 11, for some reason, they stopped supporting external sample formats. Not to worry though, there are a couple more options. If you're already a contact user, you can load them into that. But if not, there is a free sample player called TX16WX. Catchy name, I know. I'll link it in the description. Go ahead and get that downloaded. Okay, so here is TX16. Let's quickly show you how to load in your sample. You simply go to the folder where you downloaded your Criminal M1 sample. You might need to unzip it first. Double click in there. You'll find the SF2 sound font bank. Open the bank, double click again, and it will load every patch in the bank. In our case, we just have the one patch. Double click that to load. There's one more simple step. Just open the sound button here and increase your release to about 100 milliseconds. That will stop the sound cutting off too abruptly when you release the key. More like how the original M1 sounded. And here's how it sounds. Sounds great, right? Like I said, you don't have to do a lot of work if you get the source right. Already sounding like an MK record. Now I've been working on a track using the riff we came up with from the last tutorial. Now I've made a few tweaks to the sound. Here's how the final drop sounds. I've made a few simple tweaks with free software. Let me show you how I got there. Right now, our M1 sample here is actually mono, which isn't a problem in itself. Mono compatibility is extremely important for dance music. If you're listening in a club, or most of the other ways people listen now, on phones, soundbars, Bluetooth speakers, mono compatibility is very important. However, it would be nice to get some stereo width for the headphone users. And the hard part is most stereo wideners mess up the mono component. But there is a free one which doesn't. It's called Stereo Touch by Voxengo. 
Without going too far into the science, it's basically a pair of out of phase Haas delays, if you know what those are. Anyway, here's how it sounds. This is with it off. Great stuff. Next up, a bit of EQ. As bright as the M1 is, it wasn't bright enough compared to the references. I'm using the fantastic Slick EQ by Tokyo Dawn. This is one of the best EQs on the market, paid or free. Apart from just the sheer sound quality, its best feature, in my opinion, is the auto gain compensation. The reason that's important is the brain will automatically think anything that's louder is better, even by half a dB. When you're cranking your top end or your mids or whatever, you're automatically going to think the sound is improved, even if you're making it worse. So this EQ will compensate the volume so you can make better judgments. As you can see, I have added lots of top end, but because it's turning down the output, we're effectively losing bottom end as well. Now, if you're writing down any numbers, don't. These settings are to work with my drums, my vocals, other elements in the track. They're not going to work for you. Get a reference track in your door and adjust to taste. Let me show you in context. Here's without. And on. Fantastic stuff. That's Slick EQ by Tokyo Dawn. Next up, a familiar face to many of you, I'm sure. Steve Dudas or x for Records OTT. When I was referencing other tracks, I needed a little bit more punch. Now, OTT is indeed over the top. So we're only mixing in 15% of this. And even then, I've dialed down the compression, both the downward and the upward compression. Let me show you the difference that makes. Here's off. Just gives it a little bit more energy. Next, I added a simple eighth note delay. If you saw my video on delays, you'll know why I chose an eighth note, because this riff has a lot of dotted eighth notes in its rhythm. That sounds like this. Now, any delay will do, preferably one that lets you adjust the tone. You don't want too many lows or highs in the repeats. That just gets messy. But in general, any eighth note delay and you're good to go. Now, lastly, I've got a reverb. We are using Tal, recently upgraded to version four. This is great when you don't want a real room sound, much in the same way that our piano isn't very realistic. Realistic room sounds don't work as often in electronic music. To those that know your gear, I think of Tal Reverb as like a cheap lexicon. It's very useful in its own right. Anyway, it sounds like... It's a bit exaggerated for the video, but in context, here's how everything sounds. without here we go not too complicated right eq to taste add some stereo width 
possibly a little OTT. Delay and reverb. Let me show you the bass. Sounds like this. I've got the same delay on there. A little bit of the stereo again. And as always, it's a vital patch, which I will link in the description. Right then, there you have it. Classic piano house sound. In a nutshell, get the source sound right and the rest should be easy. If you're struggling, you're probably overthinking it. <laughs> As always, I hope you learned something. If you did, you know what to do. Leave me a like. If you really liked it, leave me a sub. And if you want to know more, leave me a comment. Ask me any questions. And if you make anything cool, link me to it. Let me hear what you're doing. Either way, I will see you next week. Bye-bye.